if you wanted to go to meeting, it was there for you. It was here for you. Amen. Yeah. The table was set. The table was spread and where the saints could be fed. It's just up to you if you're hungry and thirsty enough to just get a bite or two. Amen. Well, I've enjoyed myself these last two nights and already tonight again. I want to thank Brother Sam for his uh, confidence in us to come to just uh, stand in this pulpit that God's given him authority over, that he trusted me enough to ask me to come and preach these few nights. I have fun memories here. Um, I have uh, some other times that we've been down, uh, Brush Arbor meetings over at Brother Paul's house, and then here a couple other revivals. And I'd look for a long time to get a chance to come back and be with you. And the Lord has supplied that. Uh, it wouldn't because I hadn't been here quicker, it wouldn't because it, he hadn't asked. Uh, it wouldn't because Brother Dale, that we used to be here, hadn't asked. It wasn't because some of you hadn't asked. It just because that uh, about every time you ask, I already had something on that week. And, uh, you know, we just, I'm just glad God worked it out. Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed it, like I said. And I know the Lord wants to bless above measure tonight. He wants to save somebody if you're lost. Now, I want to say this to you. Revival is for the church. But if anybody gets saved, that's icing on the cake. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I love icing on my cake. Amen. Amen. And so I, I just pray and hope somebody gets saved tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, and if not tonight, then in the near future, I want Brother Sam to call me and tell me all about it. Because I believe God's going to do that. But uh, I want to get right into what the Lord's given me to say to you tonight. And it'll be found over... In, I believe, the 10th chapter of the book of Luke in the 38th verse. And as I look at this text, I don't believe I'd preach over three or four hours on this. Amen. amen. I got one amen out of that. Amen. <laughs> well, you know what? We're not going to try to hold you too long. We're going to try to do, we know Elizabeth Taylor was living. She had eight husbands. I'm going to try to do you like she done her last husband. I ain't going to keep you too long. Say amen. Amen. Stand with me if you will, if you found your place. Luke 10, verse 38. A well-known story. It's in more than this, just, just this gospel. It's over in the book of John, the whole rest of the story about Martha and Mary and, of course, their brother Lazarus. But I want to read from this portion of God's Word tonight. And it says, Now it came to pass that they went, that he entered into a certain village, a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Let me say that again. She sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. I'll come back to that in a little bit. But Martha was cumbered about, worried, in other words, about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, Doest thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, I want to preach a little while tonight out of that 39th verse. I want to just lift out this phrase, and she sat at Jesus' feet, and I just want to preach a little while on look for me at Jesus' feet. I don't know about you, but that is a wonderful place to be tonight Amen. at his wonderful feet. Would you be seated, and would you pray with me and for me, and I'll try to preach this simple message. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. All your blessings, the food, the clothes, the home. Lord, I thank you for everything we got. We realize you've given it to us. But Lord, we thank you most of all for eternal, everlasting life that we have in and through you, our darling Savior. And Lord, tonight I pray somebody that might be here lost, young or old, middle age, whatever age. Lord, if they're lost, they need you. I pray they'd find their way to your feet tonight and be saved before it be eternally too late. And oh God, tonight may we as your people stay and hover around your blessed feet because there's blessings, Lord, that we can't even imagine, can't even count them all. But Lord, tonight I pray you'd use me, 
for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' sweet, blessed name, amen. I said I wanted to preach on look for me at Jesus' feet. Now, if you were to go to heaven tonight and look Mary up, I believe she would say to you, uh, if you ask her where she stayed most of the time down here in this world and in this life, I believe she would have said this, every chance I got, I was at the feet of Jesus, amen. And you say, well, where is she at up there? I believe she's still there at the feet of Jesus. Can I just say to you tonight that at the feet of Jesus, it is a special place. It is a spiritual place. It is a great place to be, as I said a little bit ago. Can I just say it to you tonight? The Bible said Moses found that place when the Bible said that he uh, asked that God would show him his glory. Uh, and he said, I'll do that and I'll pass by and I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. And when I do, you can see my hinder parts, but you can't look upon my face. But he said, I just want you to know I'm gonna show you my glory. And there's an interesting verse right there in in the middle of that in Exodus 33 and 18, 19 and 20. And it says this, there was a place by him. That's by the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, Abraham found that place. Jeremiah found that place. And me and you was talking about a while ago, Glenn. I want you to know you skip over in the New Testament and the apostle Paul found that place. I want you to know old John found that place on the Isle of Patmos. I want you to know Junior Garmin's found that place, that special place, that that spiritual place at the feet of Jesus. I preached a message several years ago, Brother Sam, and I entitled it, Things You Find at the Feet of Jesus. And you know what you can find there tonight? You can find grace. You can find mercy. You can find peace and hope. Hallelujah. You can find consolation. You can find salvation tonight at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want you to think about this with me just for a few moments. The Bible said, here's me. Mary, and here's Martha, and Martha is troubled about a lot of things. You wanna know why a lot of folk ain't here tonight or won't be here Sunday morning when you meet again and where I pastor? Because there's too many other things, amen, more important than the things of God. I wanna say something to you, folk. The reason our churches are not running over is because the things of the world have got people's attention till they don't see a need to get at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know Mary chose that good part that the Bible said wouldn't be taken away from her. I want you to know one thing is needful, that we would just stay at Jesus' feet. But I want to show you three things quickly in this message tonight, what Mary was doing at the feet of Jesus. Number one, she was worshiping him. She heard his word. Ain't nothing more blessed to me than to hear somebody teach or preach wonder God's wonderful word. Can I just tell you something tonight? There's just something about the preached word and the taught word of God. I'll tell you what, folks, she had been there more than once. You wanna know why? Because she always got what she was looking for and needing from the Lord. I just wanna say this quickly and I'll move on, but she was worshiping the Lord at the feet of Jesus. Can I just say to you, we're in these last days of the contemporary temporary church are you listening to me? I want to say something, brothers and sisters. There are people that will tell you we need to get us a worship leader. Are you looking right up here? I'm one. Hallelujah. You see your pastor sitting over here. He's one. How you say, preacher, what are you trying to tell me? When I was just a boy growing up in the southern part of Coleman County, our old pastor led us in praise, amen, and adoration under our God. I'll throw this in there. I want to thank God for these little children that came up here tonight and their leaders. You say, preacher, we need some worship songs. Well, we just heard a bunch of them say amen. Come morning, hallelujah. I just tell you tonight, I'm of the old school. I love the old songs and hymns, but I can tell you this, every once in a while, I'll just sit there and listen to that old good song, amen, that God's given somebody else in these last days. But oh, honey, listen to me. 
We need to come to church to worship a true and a living God. Did you know you can come to church and you can sit there and hear good singing and hear good preaching and not worship the Lord one lick? Say amen. The Bible said in the fourth chapter of John, Glenn, it says this, Jesus talking to the woman at the well. It said that they is, that men are going to a certain mountain to worship God. He said, but the day is coming when I'll seek those that will worship me in spirit and in truth. I tell you something, if you don't come to church and worship him in spirit and in truth, you're missing it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I looked that word worship up. You know what it means? Worship. You know how much people worship God? It's Mm, it all depends on how much he's worth to them. Say amen. Can I just tell you tonight, I want to praise him. I want to thank him. I just want him to know that I love him beyond measure. But listen to me. I love to go to church where the river gets out of the banks. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like to go to service where brothers and sisters, we can't explain what has happened there. And we get out and somebody missed church one Sunday or one Sunday night. And all you can tell them when they missed a the big blessing and all and tell you is you ought to been there. Say amen. You just can't believe it. Can I just tell you something tonight? I love it when I said the river gets out of the bank. Oh glory, what a time when God's spirit is so real that you feel like you can just reach out and touch the Lord. I thought about one Sunday PJs. Y'all know where PJs is? Used to be. They're closed down now. I went by there one Sunday. I love to go to PJs. You say, I didn't like that much. I didn't like their food. I did. It was free for me. Ah, amen. All preachers eat free. And they're why I miss Hold Your Rome. Say, man, I miss PJ. But I went by there one day and I run into one of these stiff, full starchy preachers. Hey, man, ain't never had a hallelujah roll out of his mouth. Had never had a hand go up, shoot up to praise God. And he asked me, he said, Brother Junior, how was it at church today down there at Bremen where you're pastoring? I said, Well, it got on today. He said, Got on? What are you talking about? I said, Well, the river got out of the bank. He said, Well, it ain't rained a lick in three, three or four months what you were talking about he said well I'll just tell you I didn't get to preach oh he said oh why are you talking about I said people got saved and people were shouting it out and people were enjoying themselves at the house of the Lord I said I will not tell you something it got on hallelujah he said you didn't preach would they not let you I said no God wouldn't Amen. I'd love to be in another service where the people of God would do some preaching. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his sweet name. But there's a lot of folk in the Baptist camp. I don't know about the Holy Church of Christ camp, but there's a bunch in the Baptist camp. They've got them a line, imaginary line drawn out there, and they're not going no further than that. They don't want to be accused of being a holy roller. Can I tell you, it's better than what they used to call me before I got saved. Amen. Yes, you can call me a holy roller if you want to. The Bible says, be ye holy, even as he is holy. Amen. And then I'll tell you something else. If you're rolling, you're headed somewhere. Hallelujah. Call me a holy roller. I don't care. I'm headed somewhere. I told somebody the other night, I'm a Baptist by choice, but I got some Pentecostal ways. Say Amen. Hey, glory to God. My dear old mama, I'm gonna throw this in, won't cost you a bit more. My dear old mama, she got saved down in Sipsy, Alabama, and she grew up amongst and in the ground around the fire of the Holy Ghost. Do you know where I'm going with this? She's 14 years old. She gets saved, and ever since that night she got saved, brothers and sisters, she shouted it out for the Lord till the day she left this world. You say, what you trying to tell me? She'd get to, hmm, oh, Lord, glory to God. She'd follow me around, and I'd preach, and, and I'll tell you, she'd shout, and it got where you couldn't hardly hear me preaching for her a shouting, say amen, but I didn't mind it. In fact, I'd love to hear her shout out tonight one more blessed time. Woo, glory to God. I'm telling you here tonight, it was something wonderful. And we'd start home and she'd say, Junior, 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 that's me, I'm her baby. She said, I believe you're the best preacher I ever heard. I said, Mama, I believe that and you believe that, but don't tell nobody else that. <laughs> well, you know what she looked at me and what she'd always say? She'd say, well, Junior, I believe beside you, Billy Graham's a lost man. Say amen. 
Well, you know what it was? She just loved me. I'm no better than nobody else. Hallelujah. I'm not a better preacher than anybody else. But I will tell you, Woo, that ain't very deep. In fact, you might call me the shallow Baptist from Bug Tussle. I don't care, but there's one thing about it. I've been accused of a lot of things, but one of them ain't being deep. But you don't need a dictionary to follow me. If you could understand what I'm a preacher tonight, your understanding is broke. Say amen. I'm just telling you tonight, I love it when the river gets out of the banks. I love it, praise God, when it gets on. You say, preacher, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's about time you did. Say amen. You're missing it. Say amen. I'm gonna say this to you, and I gotta hurry, hurry and hasten on. I'm just glad that there's worship to be had down at the house of the Lord. You know what kind of revival I hope y'all are having this week? I I tell you the kind I'm a having. It's the kind that erases all them imaginary lines. Amen. And I'm just going to go further. I'm just going to go deeper. I'm just going to go higher with my Lord. I go back to church Sunday. And if I'm a living and able and Jesus don't come back before then, I'm going to go in there and act kind of like this. And they're going to say, what's wrong with you? And I'm going to tell them, I've been in a revival. Yeah. Woo, Glory. Oh, that old boy back to PJ's. I didn't finish the story. He said, well, I hope that don't ever happen in our church. I said, they won't have to worry about it. I've been to your church and I've heard you preach. Ain't no worries. Say amen. 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 I'm telling you, oh Mary, the reason she loved to get at the feet of Jesus, it was where she could worship and adore her Lord and Savior and her soon coming King. I'm gonna tell you something else and I gotta hurry. But number two, I wanna skip over to the 11th chapter of John. Now you don't have to look, but I'll tell you all about it. But over there, the Bible says Mary comes here. Her brother's dead. Mary's weeping. The Bible said the Jews are weeping. Oh, listen, this is what Mary was doing at the feet of Jesus. She was not only worshiping Jesus, she was weeping at his feet because in the 11th chapter and the 35th verse, the shortest hmm, verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Can I just say something? There's a lots of things that's gonna break your heart and my heart along life's way. There's gonna be a lot of tears fall from these eyes, but I got good news. God understands mm, tears. It's a language God understands. And you say, preacher, I believe it's a sign of weakness. Ah, honey, I'll tell you what tonight, it ain't a sign of me, uh, mm, weakness, it's a sign of meekness. Hallelujah. You men here tonight, oh, don't get on to your boys, don't get on to your children for weeping if they get hurt or something breaks their heart. Don't you get on to them for shedding tears. It's just a natural thing. And I've heard daddies get on to their kids and say, don't you dare cry. I know it hurts, but don't you cry. I'm telling you, you'll raise a monster if you keep telling them that. Let them let their feelings out and let them feel brothers and sisters like a human being ought to feel and weep every once in a while. Glory. Glory. I'm gonna tell you, I've wept a lot. I've cried a lot of tears in 40 plus years over Baptists and why they won't go to church and why they won't be faithful. And won't nobody know nothing about it unless you get to be a pastor someday. You'll understand then. But you don't understand it tonight. Laying awake at night and wondering why this and won't do what they ought to do and Where'd that one go that I thought was just going to get in there and really get the job done? Oh, what am I, what are we going to do now? And just and I'll tell you, there's been a many a night I've cried myself to sleep, but I've never cried myself asleep alone. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Somewhere, standing in the shadows, is Jesus, Jesus, and Him alone. I want to tell you, the the child of God, the Christian, you'll have some broken heart times. You're going to shed some. tears but Jesus, Jesus, oh, sweetest name I know, he filled my ever longing. 
Woo, it keeps me happy as I go. Some of y'all looking around trying to find something to do. Look right up here, we're still preaching, say amen. And I wanna tell you tonight, we come to God's house, we get at the feet of Jesus. We ought to worship him and we ought to weep with a broken heart and a contrast spirit for the way this world, this country is tonight. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Can you just imagine, here's Mary. Now you, you don't look like Mary. And I don't look, amen, you don't. And I know I don't look like Jesus. But I reckon this is Mary tonight. And she's a sitting there and she's a weeping. And up walks Jesus and puts his precious hand on her and says, it's gonna be all right. And she's a weeping and Jesus is a weeping. And Jesus' tears begins to fall from his eyes. Mm, listen to me. And put her patter on the back of her neck and on her face and in mingling with her tears. Can you get the scene tonight? I got news, got good news for you. This ain't fake news. This is real news. Jesus really cares. Hey, man, he's compassionate. And when Mary looked up and saw who it was and felt the tears coming down, I'm sure she said he did love us. He does love us. He did show up. He is the, mm, the master of it all. He's come to help us. He's gonna do what needs to be done. Can I just tell you tonight, the Bible says we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity but in every way we as tempted as we are yet without sin and the Bible goes on to say in the 8th chapter of John, brother Jesus he groans in the spirit he groaned when he saw Mary weeping. He groaned when he saw all the Jews weeping. I believe there's a lot of reasons why, but I believe it touched his great heart because he cared about that little family. God sent me all the way from Bug Tussle to tell somebody that God still loves you. Amen. You may have walked through them doors here tonight with the heaviest, biggest burden you've ever had. But I, want you to not, I don't want you to leave without knowing Jesus. It's going to help you if you'll let him. I heard a good report about somebody has cancer and it's in remission. Praise his holy name. Amen. I got a little girl down in, it ain't my little child, but it's a little precious child from church, little Emma. I wish y'all would pray for her when you get a chance. She just got diagnosed today with lymphomatic cancer. And I want to tell you something, they're going to start next Monday with the treatments. I won't give you this though. I'm just going to go ahead and keep on praying anyway Amen. and believe God. And I want to tell y'all something, she's autistic. And I want to tell you, if y'all don't know what that is, I'll tell you, that's church. But she's just the sweetest little old thing. <laughs> Well, I'll get to preaching on Sunday morning and she will lift up her little hand, amen, and she's learning sign language like these kids were doing a while ago in that song. And I'll say, well, you sure are looking good today, Emma. And she'll do this, that means thank you. Amen. And she also knows this. When you put your arms around her and kiss her on her cheek and tell her you love her, she knows that too. Woo! I'm glad I got a Savior that loves me and puts his arms around me. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, got to have a drink of water. Y'all ever read your book, your Bible very much? All these tears you shed. You ever read what the psalmist David said? He's bottling them up. You read the last book in the Bible? It also says this, that someday he's gonna wipe away all tears <laughs> from her eyes. Well, glory, I've got a, mm, I got a glory bump on my neck big as a hickory nut. Say amen. amen. I felt that. You say, I see some of that mama coming out of you, amen. I forgot to tell you all that story a while ago. When mama would get happy and get in the spirit, she'd get to doing this and her doing that. And they're doing that. I said, oh God, I hope you'll get her out of that. And since I got saved, born again, filled with the Spirit, I said, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Hallelujah. Can I just tell you though, things will break your heart down here, but God has made a promise. I'm gonna wipe all of them away. And one of these 
days when you get to the throne eternal. You walk into the presence of God. You're going to pull that tear bottle out. You're going to say, come here, Junior. You see that one? That's one of your tears. You shed when your mama died. It's gone. Junior, there's one when your daddy died. It's gone. Oh, Junior, there's with all them old men of God that you loved and looked up to and they died out and went on for you did. They're gone. Hey, when your wife died, when your husband died and you cried to yourself to sleep, uh, when that, uh, oh, listen to me, or when that special person, when your pastor passed away, I don't want to bring nothing up that'll break your heart. But Brother Dale, I loved him. I appreciated him. And I'm sure you shed many a tear. But one blessed day, when you stand in the throne eternal, God's going to say, there goes them that you shed for old Dale. The reason being, there's no tears in God's heaven. Sarah will be over with. Oh, I buried my mama, buried my daddy. Spoke at both of them's funeral. You say, how can you do that? Grace. Grace. No, that ain't all of it. There's a better day coming. Come morning, we'll walk by the river together. I remember when mama passed away and she was laying a corpse in Moss Funeral Home in Coleman. And, and I got there earlier and I rest of the family. And I said, I want to ask you something, Mr. Director. Can I go back there and see Mama first? She said, well, don't you want to wait for the rest of the family? I said, no, I won't go now. He said, all right, I know you, brother. I, I, yeah, that's fine, come on. We walked back there. And I looked down in that casket at my Mama. And I looked at them hands that had patted my favorite brown washed me with a little washcloth and put little poultices on my chest when I had colds. Y'all ever heard of Vicks Vapor Rub? What about Sotus? Yeah. And she'd rub me down real good and all kind of other remedies. And them little old hands is folded now. And them little old feet that just run herself to death trying to help me in every way she could. They couldn't move no more. But when I looked into the casket, I didn't... Mm. I tell you what I seen. I seen a better day. I stood there and I'm not no singer, but I want to be. But I stood there and I just sung that old song, I'll meet you in the morning. You say, preacher, I'll tell you, if you can't sing, why would you try it? Hey, it's just me and mom and the Lord. Say amen. I'm just here to tell you, those tears I've cried for years for whatever reason, when I get you under the glory, he's gonna wipe them away and they'll be gone. Hallelujah. One last thing I'm through. Mary was worshiping at his feet. Mary was weeping at his feet. And Mary was washing his feet with her tears. And she didn't stop there. When she wet them feet down real good, the feet of Jesus, she dried them with the hair from her own head. In Bible days, folks, listen real close to me. The Bible said the hair was a woman's glory. She was doing the best she could do to worship and to weep, amen, and to wash. And then she done something else. She had an alabaster box full of precious ornament, and she broke it. And she anointed Jesus and all them old scribes and Pharisees and either, even the first apostles said, well, you're wasting this, Jesus. She's a wasting this. Took a year to accumulate all that. Said, oh, she's anointing me to my burial. Leave her alone. And when my Lord went to Pilate's hall, hey, don't y'all leave now. Y'all stay. You're going to miss a blessing if you come unglued before I get through it. But when they took him to Pilate's hall, and they laughed at him. 
and they accused him of this, that, and the other. And then they took him the next day and, and they beat him. So the Bible said in the 52nd chapter of the book of Isaiah that his visage or his visage was marred more than any other man. 22nd chapter of the book of Psalms says, and they looked upon my bones. You want to know how they could do that? Because they had beat the they had beat the flesh and the sinew and the muscle away from the bones in his body. And the next day when he's carrying his own cross down the road to Calvary and up to Calvary's hill. He's been up all night. They've spit on him. He's bled all over the place. And anybody else in that shape would be stinking. But when Jesus walked down the road, headed up to the top of Golgotha's hill, all they could smell was a sweet aroma of his being anointed by Mary. Hey, can I tell y'all something? A while ago, I got in such a way I thought I could smell the rose of Sharon in here. I thought I got a whiff of the lily in the valley. Can I tell y'all something? It smells good in here tonight. You won't know why? Because the crucified, risen Savior, amen, Son of God, has come to visit us tonight. And when God looked down and saw his son die, and then he lifted up and said these words, he said, this is a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. I just want to tell y'all something, ladies and gentlemen. Every scar, every wound in his precious body is because of you and me tonight. I'm going to end up with this. When we all get to glory and when we get to heaven. The Bible said if you've accumulated any crowns here, you're just going to take them off and lay them at his feet. All of us have got one automatically. That's the crown of life if you say. But there's four more of you in earn. By being faithful. Now y'all don't believe that. You better get your book down and read it. I want to tell y'all something. There's some things we can give back to God. And we ought to be willing since he's give us everything we got. Amen. But when we lay them down. Now I don't say this. But I just imagine this. And when he reaches down. And that sleeve comes up. And them wounds are present and appear. And you can ask him Jesus. Why are those scars in your hand there? He said they're here, they're there in my hands and my feet and on my body so you can be here. In heaven. I believe Mary's at his feet tonight. It's a blessed place. It's a wonderful place. A lot of people wasting their whole life at the feet of Nick Saban. And <laughs> now, I'm an Alabama fan. I know this. People worship a man. What's the one down at Auburn? What's his name? Who? They ain't an Auburn fan here, are they? <laughs> well, what's his name? Miles on. I want to call him Muschamp. Huh? I love sports. I, lo I don't watch no NFL no more. Nope. Hello. Nope. Amen. <laughs> you say, what you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. And I know preachers getting in trouble all over America for saying things like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. They don't like this country. They don't like the millions they're making. Go find you another country. Say amen. Amen. I heard the other day, I heard this on that space book, or is it Facebook? I heard it on that space, some of them spaced out on there, I can tell you that. But one of them said, didn't put this post on there and said, you know what? Said, you know what? He said, you know what's going on in America? He said, now the NFL, the commissioner, is trying to make all of them to stand instead of kneeling. He said, we're under slave. We're, we're slaves again. I'm going to tell you something. They can let me be their slave for 50 million a year. Say amen. amen. I don't know how I got off on that, but <laughs> true anyway, ain't it? I tell you what. 
Ain't nobody's feet we need to bow to but his. I'm going to throw this in. This is where I was going with it anyway. A lot of folks kneeling for a lot of reasons. But I read in God's word in the second chapter of the book of Philippians that there's a day coming when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God the Father. You won't know why? Because the Bible said God is highly exalted who? Jesus. And give him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. And then Paul said the day was coming when every tongue would mm, confess and every knee bow. Tonight, why don't you do it and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Come up here and get at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Get down in this altar tonight. Children, are you saved? Have you ever accepted Christ? I don't know. How about you, mama, daddy? Maybe everybody in the building saved, but do you know somebody lost tonight? Would you just, with me, raise your hand and say, I know somebody. Well, I want to tell you, I want us to meet in the altar here in a minute. And I want us to pray that we can get them to Jesus' feet. Because if we can get them to the feet of Jesus, he knows what to do with them. Say amen. Would you stand all over the house? Brother Sam, come on now. Stand. Musicians come. Pianists, whoever. Who's going to do what? Oh, glory.